is very inclusive. We like to include everyone. I think that this can be shown by the teachers and by the staff and by the students who we always make an effort to make sure that everyone is included no matter what it happens to be. If somebody is sitting by themselves at lunch, you know, um, somebody usually invites them to come and sit with them. I feel that we have a fairly inclusive school environment, but I mean, there's always changes to be made, always improvement that can be made, and through that we could try and having more awareness built up that some of the jokes and humor that students use is slightly racist or sexist, and the more they become aware that it's not funny anymore and that it's not exactly politically correct, that the better they will be as they mature and improve. I think our school is really inclusive and we do a really good job at including everyone. Um, and because we're such a small school of 600 students, um, it's more easy, easier, it's easier um, to do that. But at the same time, I think there could be more done to be inclusive. I do believe that um, we have an inclusive school environment because of all the extracurricular activities that we have and the resources that are provided to everyone. So I do feel that we are all very connected on those, that ground. Give a little bit. I give a little bit of my love. Um, I feel that with some types of bullying, like cyberbullying, uh, teachers and administration don't necessarily find out about it because people are, are sort of afraid to talk about it. But in our school community, I think that um, most of the other types of bullying are dealt with pretty well. Um, if, if a teacher sees people getting in a disagreement, they'll usually try and step in or anything like that. And also in our school community there isn't um, a lot of bullying because everyone respects everyone mostly and uh, includes everyone in activities and stuff. I believe that Canada's curriculum reflects Canada's diversity um, in two particular reasons. One is our broadened uh, history program um, through the curriculum where we have examined both Canada's interesting and great past also but also the pitfalls as well such as like the First Nations issues that we've had in the past such as um, the intern or the internment camps. Um, because of peer pressure, really. I mean, if, if students you look up to are encouraging an inclusive environment, um, then you're going to see that that's the right thing to do. Whereas, as much as a teacher can encourage it, and teachers should encourage it, um, they might not have the same impact for other students as their peers would. I think the staff are mainly responsible for creating the inclusive environment because when the staff are inclusive, then the students will follow to be inclusive as well. And this just helps everyone um, because usually, as a student, you usually need some kind of guidance before you step up to the plate. Uh, well, obviously, I think everyone in the school, from the teachers to the students, are responsible. But I think that as teachers and as role models, uh, they really do have the greatest impact on the students. And so they're the ones who are responsible for giving us a really inclusive environment. So give a little bit. Give a little I think it's everybody's responsibility to, um, to work with all their administration um, if they see a shortcoming um, in their school. I mean, we all want to have the best learning environment possible and it's everyone's responsibility to make that happen. Um, now I think, you know, going to principals and stuff, they should also be open um, to working with students to make sure that the best school um, can be made. about mental health in, uh, in phys ed class, in our health class, someone came in, and then there was also a presentation done once last year. However, I think that's one thing that can be addressed more. I, I mean, it is a big issue and a lot of students in the school are probably affected 
by either a mental health disorder or, or they know someone who is, and I think that the school could do more to either add it into the uh, health program or, or have more presentations so that people are a little more informed. So I think there's a lot of um, mental health um, things that are being done, but I think there could be more. Um, within the school, we've had presentations in our health classes. There's a lot of curriculum on that. and But I think that um, taking phys ed and taking health isn't mandatory after grade nine. So a lot of people, you know, forget about the mental health issues. And it's something that affects so many students in our school. And I think um, at the age that the students are at, um, eating disorders are a huge um, thing that are that is happening, and it seems to be growing within our schools. As far as physical disabilities go, we do have uh, several elevators throughout the school, um, so it's it's easy to get around the stairs and everything like that. And as well, um, lots of the people in the hallways will help you if they see you're struggling to get into the elevator. Um, and also for the mental disabilities, uh, we have um, many, many EAs at our school that uh, can work individually with those people who have mental disabilities to sort of get them where they're supposed to be and um, get them on their individual learning plan.